This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Peter Yearsley. Beowulf by Anonymous. Translated by Francis Barton Gamere. Section 5. Hrothgar spake, helmet of Skildings. Ask not of pleasure, pain is renewed to Danish folk. Dead is Aeschere of Irminlaf, the elder brother, my sage adviser and stay in council, shoulder comrade in stress of fight, when warriors clashed and we warded our heads, hewed the helm of boars. Hero famed should be every earl as Aeschere was. But here in Hierot a hand hath slain him of wandering death sprite. I wot not whither, proud of the prey, her path she took, fain of her fill. The feud she avenged that yesternight, unyieldingly, Grendel, in grimmest grasp thou killedst. Seeing how long these liegemen mine he ruined and ravaged, reft of life in arms he fell. Now another comes, keen and cruel, her kin to avenge, faring far in feud of blood, so that many a thane shall think, who e'er sorrows in soul for that sharer of rings, this is hardest of heart bales. The hand lies low that once was willing each wish to please. Land dwellers here, and liegemen mine, who house by those parts, I have heard relate that such a pair they have sometimes seen, march stalkers mighty the moorland haunting, wandering spirits. One of them seemed, so far as my folk could fairly judge, of womankind, and one accursed. In man's guise trod the misery track of exile, though huger than human bulk. Grendel, in days long gone, they named him folk of the land. His father they knew not, nor any brood that was born to him of treacherous spirits. Untrod is their home, by wolf cliffs haunt they, and windy headlands, fenways fearful where flows the stream from mountains gliding to gloom of the rocks, underground flood. Not far is it hence in measure of miles that the mere expands, and o'er it the frost-bound forest hanging, sturdily rooted, shadows the wave. By night is a wonder weird to see, fire on the waters. So wise lived none of the sons of men to search those depths. Nay, though the heath-rover harried by dogs the horn-proud heart, this halt should seek, long distance driven his dear life, first on the brink he yields, ere he brave the plunge to hide his head. Tis no happy place, thence the welter of waters washes up, one to welkin, when winds bestir evil storms, and air grows dusk, and the heavens weep. Now is help once more with thee alone, the land thou knowest not, place of fear, where thou findest out that sin-flecked being. Seek if thou dare, I will reward thee for waging this fight with ancient treasure as erst I did with winding gold, if thou winnest back. Beowulf spake, bairn of Egthjau, Sorrow not, sage, it beseems us better friends to avenge than fruitlessly mourn them. Each of us all must his end abide in the ways of the world. So win who may glory ere death. When his days are told, that is the warrior's worthiest doom. Rise, O realm warder, ride we anon, and mark the trail of the mother of Grendel. No harbour shall hide her, heed my promise. Enfolding of field, or forested mountain, or floor of the flood, 
let her flee whence she will, but thou this day endure in patience, as I ween thou wilt, thy woes, each one. Lept up the greybeard. God he thanked, mighty lord, for the man's brave words. For Hrothgar soon a horse was saddled, wave main steed. The sovereign wise stately rode on, his shield-armed men followed in force. The footprints led along the woodland, widely seen, a path o'er the plain, where she passed, and trod the murky moor. Of men-at-arms she bore the bravest and best one, dead, him who with Hrothgar the homestead ruled. On, then, went the atheling born, o'er stone cliffs, steep and straight defiles, narrow passes and unknown ways, headlands sheer, and the haunts of the Nikors. Foremost he fared, a few at his side of the wisest men, the ways to scan, till he found in a flash the forested hill hanging over the hoary rock, a woeful wood. The waves below were dyed in blood. The Danish men had sorrow of soul, and for skildings all, for many a hero, was hard to bear, ill for earls, when Iscare's head they found by the flood on the foreland there. Waves were welling, the warriors saw, hot with blood. But the horn sang oft battle-song bold. The band sat down, and watched on the water worm-like things, sea-dragons strange that sounded the deep, and nicors that lay on the ledge of the ness such as oft essay at hour of morn on the road of sails their ruthless quest and sea-snakes and monsters these started away swollen and savage that song to hear that war-horn's blast the warden of giats with bolt from bow then balked of life of wave-work one monster amid its heart went the keen war-shaft in water it seemed less doughty in swimming whom death had seized. Swift on the billows, with boar-spears well hooked and barbed, it was hard beset, done to death and dragged on the headland, wave Roma wondrous. Warriors viewed the grisly quest. Then girt him Beowulf in martial mail, nor mourned for his life. His breastplate broad and bright of hues, woven by hand, should the waters dry. Well could it ward the warrior's body that battle should break on his breast in vain, nor harm his heart by the hand of a foe. And the helmet white that his head protected was destined to dare the deeps of the flood, the wave whirl win. T'was wound with chains, decked with gold as in days of yore. The weaponsmith worked it wondrously, with swine forms set it, that swords nowise brandished in battle could bite that helm. Nor was that the meanest of mighty helps which Hrothgar's orator offered at need. Runting they named the hilted sword, of old-time heirlooms easily first. Iron was its edge, all etched with poison, with battle-blood hardened nor blenched it at fight in hero's hand who held it ever, on paths of peril prepared to go to folkstead of foes. Not first time this it was destined to do a daring task, for he bore not in mind the bairn of Ecglaf sturdy and strong, that speech he had made, drunk with wine. Now this weapon he lent to a stouter swordsman. Himself though durst not under welter of waters wager his life as loyal liegeman. So lost he his glory, honour of earls, with the other not so, who girded him now for the grim encounter. Beowulf spake, bairn of Ecgtheow, Have mind, thou honoured offspring of Healfdain, gold friend of men, now I go on this quest, sovereign wise, what once was said, if in thy cause it came that I should lose my life, thou wouldst loyal bide to me, though fallen, in father's place. 
Be guardian thou to this group of my thanes, my warrior friends, if war should seize me. And the goodly gifts thou gavest me, Hrothgar beloved, to Hygelac send. Geatland's king may ken by the gold, Hrethel's son see, when he stares at the treasure, that I got me a friend for goodness famed, and joyed, while I could, in my jewel bestower. And let Unferth wield this wondrous sword, Earl far honoured, this heirloom precious, hard of edge. With thrunting I seek doom of glory, or death shall take me. After these words the Wader Geat Lord boldly hastened, biding never answer at all. The ocean floods closed o'er the hero. Long while of the day fled, ere he felt the floor of the sea. Soon found the fiend, who the flood domain, sword hungry held these hundred winters, greedy and grim, that some guest from above, some man, was raiding her monster realm. She grasped out for him with grisly claws, and the warrior seized, yet scathed she not his body hale. The breastplate hindered, as she strove to shatter the sark of war, the linked harness, with loathsome hand. Then bore this brine wolf, when bottom she touched, the lord of rings to the lair she haunted, whilst vainly he strove, though his valour held, weapon to wield against wondrous monsters that sore beset him. Sea-beasts many tried with fierce tusks to tear his mail, and swarmed on the stranger. But soon he marked he was now in some hall, he knew not which, where water never could work him harm, nor through the roof could reach him ever fangs of the flood. Firelight he saw, beams of a blaze that brightly shone. Then the warrior was ware of that wolf of the deep, mere wife monstrous. For mighty stroke he swung his blade, and the blow withheld not, then sang on her head that seemly blade its war-song wild. But the warrior found the light of battle was loath to bite, to harm the heart. Its hard edge failed the noble at need, yet had known of old strife hand to hand, and had helmets cloven, doomed men's fighting gear. First time this for the gleaming blade that its glory fell. Firm still stood, nor failed in valour, heedful of high deeds, Hyglax kinsman, flung away fretted sword, featly jewelled, the angry earl, on earth it lay steel-edged and stiff. His strength he trusted, hand-gripe of might, so man shall do, whenever in war he weans to earn him lasting fame, nor fears for his life. Seized them by shoulder, shrank not from combat the Giatish war-prince Grendel's mother. Flung then the fierce one, filled with wrath, his deadly foe, that she fell to ground. Swift on her part she paid him back with grisly grasp, and grappled with him. Spent with struggle stumbled the warrior, fiercest of fighting men, fell adown. On the hall guest she hurled herself. Hent her short sword, broad and brown-edged, The bairn to avenge the soul-born son. On his shoulder lay braided breast-mail, Barring death, withstanding entrance of edge or blade. Life would have ended for Ekgthiao's son Under wide earth, for that earl of Geats, Had his armour of war not aided him, Battle-net hard, and holy God Wielded the victory, wisest maker. The Lord of Heaven allowed his cause, and easily rose the earl erect. Mid the battle-gear saw he a blade triumphant, old sword of Eotens, with edge of proof, warrior's heirloom, weapon unmatched. Save only t'was more than other men to bandy of battle could bear at all. As the giants had wrought it, ready and keen, seized then its chain-hilt, the Skilding's chieftain, bold and battle-grim, brandished the sword, reckless of life, and so wrathfully smote, that it gripped her neck and grasped her hard, her bone-rings breaking. 
The blade pierced through that fated one's flesh. To floor she sank. Bloody the blade! He was blithe of his deed. Then blazed forth light. T'was bright within, as when from the sky there shines unclouded heaven's candle. The hall he scanned. By the wall then went he. His weapon raised high by its hilts, the Hygelac thane, angry and eager. That edge was not useless to the warrior now. He wished with speed Grendel to Guerdon for grim raids many. For the war he waged on western Danes oftener far than an only time, when of Hrothgar's half-companions he slew in slumber, in sleep devoured, fifteen men of the folk of Danes, and as many others outward bore his horrible prey. Well paid for that the wrathful prince, for now prone he saw Grendel stretched there, spent with war, spoiled of life, so scathed had left him Heorot's battle. The body sprang far, when after death it endured the blow, sword-stroke savage that severed its head. Soon then saw the sage companions who waited with Hrothgar, watching the flood, that the tossing waters turbid grew, blood-stained the mere. Old men together, hoary-haired of the hero, spake. The warrior would not, they weened, again, proud of conquest, come to seek their mighty master. To many it seemed the wolf of the waves had won his life. The ninth hour came. The noble Skildings left the headland. Homeward went the gold friend of men. But the guests sat on, stared at the surges, sick in heart, and wished, yet weaned not, their winsome lord again to see. Now that sword began, from blood of the fight, in battle droppings, war-blade to wane. T'was a wondrous thing that all of it melted as ice is wont, when frosty fetters the father loosens. Unwinds the wave-bonds, Wielding all seasons and times. The true God he. Nor took from that dwelling The duke of the Geats, Save only the head and that hilt Withal blazoned with jewels. The blade had melted, Burned was the bright sword. Her blood was so hot, So poisoned the hell-sprite Who perished within there. Soon he was swimming, who safe saw in combat downfall of demons, up dove through the flood. The clashing waters were cleansed now, waste of waves, where the wandering fiend her life days left, and this lapsing world. Swam then to strand the sailor's refuge, sturdy in spirit, of sea booty glad, of burden brave he bore with him went then to greet him, and God they thanked, the thane-band, choice of their chieftain blithe, that safe and sound they could see him again. Soon from the hardy one, helmet and armour deftly they doffed. Now drowsed the mere, water neath welkin with war-blood stained. Forth they fared by the footpaths thence, Merry at heart the highways measured well-known roads. Courageous men carried the head from the cliff by the sea, An arduous task for all the band, the firm in fight, Since four were needed on the shaft of slaughter, Strenuously to bear to the gold hall Grendel's head. So presently to the palace there, Foemen fearless, fourteen Geats, marching came. Their master of clan, mighty amid them, the meadow-ways trod. Strode then within the sovereign thane, fearless in fight of fame renowned, hardy hero Hrothgar to greet. And next by the hair into hall was born Grendel's head, where the henchmen were drinking, an awe to clan and queen alike, a monster of marvel. The men looked on. Beowulf spake. Bairn of Egfiao, Lo, now this sea-booty, 
son of Healfdane, lord of Skildings, we've lustily brought thee sign of glory. Thou seest it here. Not lightly did I with my life escape. In war under water this work I essayed with endless effort, and even so my strength had been lost, had the Lord not shielded me. Not a whit could I with fronting do, in work of war, though the weapon is good, yet a sword the sovereign of men vouchsafed me, to spy on the wall there, in splendour hanging, old, gigantic. How oft he guides the friendless wight! And I fought with that brand, felling in fight, since fate was with me, the house's wardens. That war-sword, then all burned, bright blade, when the blood gushed o'er it, battle-sweat hot. But the hilt I brought back from my foes. So avenged I their fiendish deeds, deathfall of Danes, as was due and right. And this is my hest, that in Heorot now safe thou canst sleep with thy soldier band, and every thane of all thy folk, both old and young, no evil fear. Skilding's lord, from that side again, aught ill for thy earls, as erst thou must. Then the golden hilt, for that grey-haired leader, hoary hero, in hand was laid, giant wrought, old, so owned and enjoyed it after downfall of devils, the Danish lord, wonder smith's work, since the world was rid of that grim-souled fiend, the foe of God, murder marked, and his mother as well. Now it passed into power of the people's king, best of all that the oceans bound, who have scattered their gold o'er Scandia's isle. Hrothgar spake, the hilt he viewed, heirloom old, where was etched the rise of that far-off fight, where the floods o'erwhelmed, raging waves, the race of giants, fearful their fate, a folk estranged from God eternal, whence Guerdon due, in that waste of waters the wielder paid them. So, on the guard of shining gold, in runic staves it was rightly said, for whom the serpent-traced sword was wrought, best of blades, in bygone days, and the hilt well wound. The wise one spake, son of Hjalfdane, silent were all. Lo, so may he say who sooth and right follows mid folk of far times mindful, a land-warden old, that this earl belongs to the better breed. So, born aloft, thy fame must fly, O friend, my Beowulf, far and wide, O folksteads many, firmly thou shall all maintain, mighty strength with mood of wisdom, love of mine will I assure thee, as a while ago I promised. Thou shalt prove a stay in future, in far-off years, to folk of thine, to the heroes a help. Was not Heremod thus, to offspring of Ecgwela, honour Skildings, nor grew for their grace, but for grisly slaughter, for doom of death to the Danishmen? He slew, wrath-swollen, his shoulder comrades, companions at board, so he passed alone, chieftain haughty, from human cheer. Though him the Maker with might endowed, delights of power, and uplifted high above all men, yet blood fierce his mind, his breast hoard grew, no bracelets gave he to Danes, as was due. He endured all joyless, strain of struggle and stress of woe, long feud with his folk. Here find thy lesson. Of virtue advise thee, this verse I have said for thee, wise from lapsed winters. Wondrous seems how to sons of men Almighty God in the strength of his spirit sendeth wisdom, estate, high station. He swayeth all things, 
whiles he letteth right lustily fare the heart of the hero of high-born race in seat ancestral assigns him bliss his folk's sure fortress in fee to hold puts in his power great parts of the earth empire so ample that end of it this wanter of wisdom weaneth none so he waxes in wealth no wise can harm him illness or age no evil cares shadow his spirit no sword hate threatens from ever an enemy all the world wends at his will no worse he knoweth till all within him obstinate pride waxes and wakes while the warden slumbers the spirit's sentry sleep is too fast which masters his might and the murderer nears stealthily shooting the shafts from his bow end of section 4 of beowulf this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org Recording by Cynthia Lyons, Naperville, Illinois. Beowulf, translated by Francis Barton Gamir, section 25. Under harness his heart then is hit indeed by sharpest shafts, and no shelter avails from foul behest of the hellish fiend. Him seems too little what long he possessed. Greedy and grim, no golden rings he gives for his pride. The promised future forgets he and spurns with all God has sent him. Wonder wielder of wealth and fame. Yet in the end it ever comes that the frame of the body fragile yields, faded falls and there follows another who joyously the jewels divides, the royal riches, nor wrecks of his forbear. Ban, then, such baleful thoughts, Beowulf, dearest, best of men, and the better part choose, prophet eternal, and temper thy pride, warrior famous, the flower of thy might lasts now a while. But ere long it shall be that sickness or sword thy strength shall minish, or fang of fire, or flooding billow, or bite of blade, or brandish spear, or odious age, or the eye's clear beam wax dull and darken. Death, even thee, in haste shall overwhelm, thou hero of war. So the ring Danes these half years a hundred I ruled, wielded neath Welkin and warded them bravely, from mighty ones many o'er middle earth, from spear and sword, till it seemed for me no foe could be found under fold of the sky. Lo, sudden the shift, to me seated secure came grief for joy when grendel began to harry my home the hellish foe for those ruthless raids unresting i suffered heart sorrow heavy heaven be thanked lord eternal for life extended that i on this head all hewn and bloody after long evil with eyes may gaze Go to the bench now, be glad at banquet, warrior worthy. A wealth of treasure at dawn of day be dealt between us. Glad was the Geats' lord, going betimes, to seek his seat as the sage commanded, afresh as before, for the famed in battle, for the band of the hall was a banquet dight nobly anew. The night helm darkened, dust o'er the drinkers, the doughty ones rose, for the hoary-headed would hasten to rest, aged Schulding, and eager the git, shield-fighter sturdy, for sleeping yearned, 
him wander weary warrior guest from far a hall thane heralded forth who by custom courtly cared for all needs of a thane as in those of old days warrior wanderers wont to have so slumbered the stout heart stately the hall rose gabled in gilt where the guest slept on till a raven black the rapture of heaven blithe heart boded bright came flying shine after shadow the swordsmen hastened athelings all were eager homeward forth to fare and far from thence the great-hearted guest would guide his keel bade then the hardy ones hunting be brought to the son of etchlaf the sword bade him take excellent iron and uttered his thanks for it quoth that he counted it keen in battle war friend winsome with words he slandered not edge of the blade twas a big-hearted man now eager for parting and armed at point warriors waited while went to his host that darling of danes the doughty atheling to high seat hastened and hrothgar greeted beowulf spoke bairn of edge thou lo we seafarers say our will far come men that we fain would seek hijalak now we here have found hosts to our heart thou hast harbored us well if ever on earth i am able to win me more of thy love o lord of men aught anew than i now have done for work of war i am willing still if it come to me ever across the seas that neighbor foreman annoy and fright thee as they that hate thee erewhile have used thousands then of thanes i shall bring heroes to help thee of hijalak i know ward of his folk that though few his years the lord of the gates will give me aid by word and by work that well i may serve thee wielding the war-wood to win thy triumph and lending thee might when thou lackest men if thy hrethric should come to court of gates a sovereign son he will surely there find his friends a far off land each man should visit who vaunts him brave him then answering hrothgar spake these words of thine the wisest god sent to thy soul no sager counsel from so young in years ere yet have i heard thou art strong of main and in mind art wary art wise in words i ween indeed if ever it hap that hrethel's heir by spear be seized by sword grim battle by illness or iron thine elder and lord people's leader and life be thine no seemlier man will the sea gates find at all to choose for their chief and king for horde god of heroes if hold thou wilt thy kinsman's kingdom thy keen mind pleases me the longer the better beowulf loved thou hast brought it about that both our peoples sons of the geat and spear dane folk shall have mutual peace and from murderous strife such as once they waged from war refrain long as i rule this realm so wide let our hordes be common let heroes with gold each other greet o'er the gannet's bath and the ring prow bear o'er rolling waves tokens of love i true my land folk toward friend and foe are firmly joined and honor they keep in the olden way to him in the hall then half dane's son gave treasures twelve and the trust of earls bade him fare with the gifts to his folk beloved hail to his home and in haste return 
then kissed the king of kin renowned the shuldings chieftain that choicest thane and fell on his neck fast flowed the tears of the hoary-headed heavy with winters he had chances twain but he clung to this that each should look on the other again and hear him in hall was this hero so dear to him his breast's wild billows he banned in vain safe in his soul a secret longing locked in his mind for that loved man burned in his blood then beowulf strode glad of his gold gifts the grass plot o'er warrior blithe the wave roamer bowed riding at anchor its owner awaiting as they hastened onward hrothgar's gift they lauded at length twas a lord unpeered every way blameless till age had broken it spareth no mortal his splendid might came now to ocean the ever courageous hardy henchmen their harness bearing woven war socks the warden marked trusty as ever the earl's return from the height of the hill no hostile words reached the guests as he rode to greet them but welcome he called to that weather clan as the sheen mailed spoilers to ship marched on then on the strand with steeds and treasure and armor their roomy and ring-dight ship was heavily laden high its mast rose over hrothgar's hoarded gems a sword to the boat-guard beowulf gave mounted with gold on the mead bench since he was better esteemed that blade possessing heirloom old their ocean keel boarding they drove through the deep and daneland left a sea cloth was set a sail with ropes firm to the mast the flood timbers moaned nor did wind over billows that wave swimmer blow across from her course the craft sped on foam necked it floated forth o'er the waves keel firm bound over briny currents till they got them sight of the geatish cliffs home known headlands high the boat stirred by winds on the strand up drove helpful at haven the harbor guard stood who long already for loved companions by the water had waited and watched afar he bound to the beach the broad-bosomed ship with anchor bands lest ocean billows that trusty timber should tear away then beowulf bade them bear the treasure gold and jewels no journey far was it thence to go to the giver of rings hygelac hrethling at home he dwelt by the sea-wall close himself and clan haughty that house a hero the king high the hall and higged right young wise and wary though winters few in those fortress walls she had found a home hereth's daughter nor humble her ways nor grudge she gifts to the geatish men of precious treasure not thrith's pride showed she folk queen famed or that fell deceit was none so daring that durst make bold save her lord alone of the liegeman dear that lady full in the face to look but forged fetters he found his lot bonds of death and brief the respite soon as they seized him his sword doom was spoken and the burnished blade a baleful murder proclaimed and closed no queenly way for woman to practice though peerless she that the weaver of peace from warrior dear by wrath and lying his life should reeve but hemming's kinsmen hindered this for over their ale men also told 
that of these folk horrors fewer she wrought onslaughts of evil after she went gold-decked bride to the brave young prince atheling haughty and offa's hall o'er the fallow flood at her father's bidding safely sought where since she prospered royal throned rich in goods fain of the fair life fate had sent her and leal in love to the lord of warriors he of all heroes i heard of ever from sea to sea of the sons of earth most excellent seemed hence offa was praised for his fighting and feeing by far-off men the spear-bold warrior wisely he ruled over his empire Omer woke to him, help of heroes, Hemming's kinsman, grandson of Garmund, grim in war. Hasten the hardy one, henchman with him, sandy strand of the sea to tread and widespread ways. The world's great candle, sun shone from south. They strode along with sturdy steps to the spot they knew where the battle king young his burg within slayer of ungentho shared the rings shelter of heroes to hijalak beowulf's coming was quickly told that there in the court the clansmen's refuge the shield companions sound and alive hail from the hero play homeward strode with haste in the hall by highest order room for the rovers was readily made by his sovereign he sat come safe from battle kinsman by kinsman his kindly lord he first had greeted in gracious form with manly words the mead dispensing came through the high hall hereth's daughter winsome to warriors wine cup bore to the hands of the heroes hijalak then his comrade fairly with question plied in the lofty hall sore longing to know what manner of sojourn the sea gates made what came of thy quest my kinsman beowulf when thy yearning suddenly swept thee yonder battle to seek o'er the briny sea combat in heroat hrothgar couldst thou aid at all the honored chief in his wide-known woes with waves of care my sad heart seethed i sore mistrusted my loved one's venture long i begged thee by no means to seek that slaughtering monster but suffer the south danes to settle their feud themselves with grendel now god be thanked that safe and sound i can see thee now beowulf spake the bairn of edge thou tis known and unhidden hijalak lord to many men that meeting of ours struggle grim between grendel and me which we fought on the field where full too many sorrows he wrought for the shielding victors evils unending these all i avenged no boast can be from breed of grendel any on earth for that uproar at dawn from the longest lived of the loathsome race in fleshly fold but first i went hrothgar to greet in the hall of gifts where halfdane's kinsman high renowned stood as my purpose was plain to him assigned me a seat by his son and heir the liegemen were lusty my life days never such merry men over mead in hall have i heard under heaven the high-born queen people's peace-bringer passed through the hall cheered the young clansmen clasps of gold ere she sought her seat to sundry gave off to the heroes hrothgar's daughter to earls in turn the ale-cup tendered she whom i heard these hall companions freawaru name when fretted gold she proffered the warriors 
promised is she gold-decked maid to the glad son of froda sage this seems to the shilding's friends kingdom's keeper he counts it wise the woman to wed so and ward off feud store of slaughter but seldom ever when men are slain does the murder speak sink but briefest while though the bride be fair nor haply will like it the heathabard lord and as little each of his liegemen all when a thane of the danes in that doughty throng goes with a lady along their hall and on him the old-time heirlooms glisten hard and ring-decked heathabard's treasure weapons that once they wielded fair until they lost it at the linden play liegemen leal and their lives as well then over the ale on this heirloom gazing some ash wielder old who has all in mind that spear death of men he is stern of mood heavy of heart in the hero young tests the temper and tries the soul and war hate wakens with words like these canst thou not comrade ken that sword which to the fray thy father carried in his final feud neath the fighting mask dearest of blades when the danish slew him and wielded the war-place on withergild's fall after havoc of heroes those hardy shildings now the son of a certain slaughtering dane proud of his treasure paces this hall joys in the killing and carries the jewel that rightfully ought to be owned by thee thus he urges and eggs him all the time with keenest words till occasion offers that freowaru's thane for his father's deed after bite of brand in his blood must slumber losing his life but that liegeman flies living away for the land he kens and thus be broken on both their sides oaths of the earls when ingeld's breast wells with war hate and wife love now after the care billows cooler grows so i hold not high the heathabard's faith due to the danes or their during love and pact of peace but i pass from that turning to grendel o giver of treasure and saying in full now how the fight resulted hand fray of heroes when heaven's jewel had fled o'er far fields that fierce sprite came night foe savage to seek us out where safe and sound we sentried the hall to hanshu then was that harassing deadly his fall there was fated he first was slain girded warrior grendel on him turned murderous mouth on our mighty kinsmen and all of the brave's man body devoured yet none the earlier empty-handed would the bloody tooth murderer mindful of bale outward go from the gold-decked hall but me he attacked in his terror of might with greedy hand grasped me a glove hung by him wide and wondrous wound with bands and in artful wise it was all wrought by devilish craft of dragon skins me therein an innocent man the fiendish foe was fain to thrust with many another he might not so when i all angrily upright stood twere long to relate how that land destroyer i paid in kind for his cruel deeds yet there my prince this people of thine got fame by my fighting he fled away and a little space his life preserved but there stayed behind him his stronger hand left in herald 
heartsick thence on the floor of the ocean that outcast fell me for this struggle the shilding's friend paid in plenty with plates of gold with many a treasure when morn had come and we all at the banquet board sat down then was song in glee the gray-haired shilding much tested told of the times of yore whilst the hero his harp bestirred wood of delight now lays he chanted of sooth and sadness or said aright legends of wonder the wide-hearted king or for years of his youth he would yearn at times for strength of old struggles now stricken with age hoary hero his heart surged full when wise with winters he wailed their flight thus in the hall the whole of that day at ease we feasted till fell o'er earth another night anon full ready in greed of vengeance grendel's mother set forth all doleful dead was her son through war-hate of wedders now woman monstrous with fury fell a foeman she slew avenging her offspring from asher old loyal counsellor life was gone nor might they even when morning broke those danish people their death-done comrade burn with brands on bale-fire lay the man they mourned under mountain stream she had carried the corpse with cruel hands for hrothgar that was the heaviest sorrow of all that had laden the lord of his folk the leader then by thy life besought me sad was his soul in the sea waves coil to play the hero and hazard my being for glory of prowess my guerdon he pledged i then in the waters tis widely known that sea-floor guardian savage found hand to hand there awhile we struggled billows welled blood in the briny hall her head i hewed with a hardy blade from grendel's mother and gained my life though not without danger my doom was not yet then the haven of heroes halfdane's son gave me in guerdon great gifts of price so held this king to the customs old that i wanted for naught in the wage i gained the meed of my might he made me gifts halfdane's heir for my own disposal now to thee my prince i proffer them all gladly give them thy grace alone can find me favor few indeed have i of kinsmen save hygelac thee then he bade them bear him the boar-head standard in battle helm high and breastplate gray the splendid sword then spake in form me this war-gear the wise old prince hrothgar gave and his hest he added that its story be straightway said to thee a while it was held by herogar king for long time lord of the land of shildings yet not to his son the sovereign left it to daring heroward dear as he was to him his harness of battle well hold thou it all and i heard that soon passed o'er the path of this treasure all apple fallow four good steeds each like the others arms and horses he gave to the king so should kinsmen be not weave one another the net of wiles or with deep hid treachery death contrive for neighbor and comrade his nephew was ever by hardy Hygelac held full dear, and each kept watch o'er the other's wheel. I heard, too, 
the necklace to Higgid he presented, wonder-wrought treasure, which Walthau gave him sovereign's daughter. Three steeds he added, slender and saddle-gay, since such gift the gem gleamed bright on the breast of the queen. Thus showed his strain the son of Edgethau, as a man remarked for mighty deeds and acts of honor. At ale he slew not comrade or kin, nor cruel his mood, though of sons of earth his strength was greatest, a glorious gift that God had sent to the splendid leader. Long was he spurned and worthless by Gatish warriors held. Him at mead the master of clans failed full off to favor at all. Slack and shiftless the strong men deemed him, profitless prince. But payment came to the warrior honored for all his woes. Then the bulwark of earls bade bring within hardy chieftain, Hrethel's heirloom garnished with gold. No geat e'er knew in shape of a sword a statelier prize. The brand he laid in Beowulf's lap, and of hides assigned him seven thousand with house and high seat. They held in common land alike by their line of birth, inheritance, home, but hire the king because of his rule over the realm itself. Now further it fell with the flight of years, with harryings horrid, that Hygelac perished, and Herdred too, by hewing of swords under the shield wall slaughtered lay, when him at the van of his victor folk sought hardy heroes, Heatho Shilfings, in arms o'erwhelming Hereric's nephew. Then Beowulf came as king this broad realm to wield, and he ruled it well fifty winters, a wise old prince warding his land, until one began in the dark of night a dragon to rage. In the grave on the hill a hoard it guarded, in the stone barrow steep a straight path reached it unknown to mortals. Some man, however, came by chance that cave within to the heathen hoard. In hand he took a golden goblet, nor gave he it back, stole with it away while the watcher slept by thievish wiles, for the warden's wrath prince and people must pay betimes. End of section 29.